Do you feel like installing a concrete swimming pool in your backyard and then drowning your math textbook and your math homework in it? That's grand. We can help you avoid getting wet and costly lawyer fees with this video from Fort Bend Tutoring and Mr. Wit. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring FBT and today's tutorial is going to be about evaluating piecewise functions. Yeah, that's right. Functions where they have cobbled together parts of other functions to make one function. Yeah, they pieced it together. Thus the name, piecewise function. All right, so here we have our first problem. So what you're looking at here is a piecewise function in function notation. That's right, that f of x means y. f of x, g of x, h of x. All of those are just names of the functions. So basically this says y equals x minus 2 as long as x is less than 3 and y equals 5 minus x as long as x is greater than or equal to 3. So basically this all depends upon the domain and that's why when you're evaluating piecewise functions all you're going to be concerned about is the conditions at first. So for our first problem right here where it says f of negative 5 it's asking you what is the y value when the x is negative 5. So first begin with your conditions. It says to use x minus 2 whenever x is less than 3. Then your function says to use 5 minus x as long as x is greater than or equal to 3. So what we realize in our first problem is that our x value that they're referring to is negative 5. Well, negative 5 is definitely less than 3. So we're going to be using this first part of the function, the x minus 2. So you'll be replacing the x with negative 5. So you'll write it as negative 5 minus 2 and then simplify that. We know that like signs add, so your answer is going to be negative 7. All right, just like that. And I don't know why this equal sign looks the way it does, but it's ugly. I'm going to fix it. All right, let me, let me, there you go. Trim that up. There you go. Nice little haircut for you. All right, so I just chopped off part of the leg of that equal sign, and now it's even now. All right, so here our answer is negative 7. I'm going to put a red box around this. Red box in it. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen, that was part A of this problem. The next thing they want to do is they want us to find what f of negative 1 is. That means your x value is negative 1. Find the y value when x is negative 1. So we always start by looking at the condition. Here, our value is negative 1. Well, that value, negative 1, is less than 3. So once again, we'll be using that x minus 2 in order to evaluate the function. So we'll be replacing x with negative 1. So you'll rewrite it as negative 1 minus 2. And then you're going to simplify. Mm -hmm. So negative 1 minus 2 is going to give you negative 3. So then red box it because this is the answer. There you go. Now we have part C and in part C our x value that we're plugging in is zero. So once again we go to our conditions. The conditions say to use x minus 2 whenever x is less than 3 to use 5 minus x whenever x is greater than or equal to 3. So zero is less than 3 so once again we're going to the x minus 2 here. So replace the x with zero. So we'll rewrite this as zero minus 2 and then simplify that to get negative 2. Then, go ahead and give wrap your answer. There you go. Red boxed it. All right. Now, we have D, part D. And it says, find the result when x is 3. So back to your conditions, all right? So here, it says to use the first one whenever x is less than 3. But here, our value for x is 3. So notice that our condition says whenever x is greater than or equal to 3 to use the 5 minus x. So what we'll do is we'll replace the x in this second part of your function here. So you'll rewrite this as 5 minus 3. So the answer when simplified is 2. All right, so there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just box this up for you. There you go. That's your answer for part D. Finally, for part E here, our value of x that we're plugging in is 5. Remember, based on your conditions, whenever x is greater than or equal to 3, we should use the second part of this function here. So we'll be plugging in 5 into the 5 minus x here, all right, replacing that x with 5. So we can rewrite this as 5 
minus 5 and then simplify this to get 0. And that's it. I'm boxing this up. Just like that. All right, so that answer there is 0. Yeah, that was problem number 1. Let's move on to problem number 2 now. All right, problem number two. We have f of x equals negative one-half x squared plus two when x is less than or equal to two. And then we have one-half x when x is greater than two. They want to know the y value when x equals negative four in part a. So the first thing you check is which part of the function you use whenever x is negative four. So the negative one-half x squared plus two should be used whenever x is less than or equal to two. Two. Well, negative 4 is definitely less than or equal to 2. So that means we're going to be plugging in negative 4 into this part of the function. So rewriting that, I'll have negative 1 half times negative 4 squared plus 2. Mm -hmm, just like that. Then, using your order of operations, we have negative 1 half. Negative 4 squared is 16, thank you very much, plus 2. Then we know that negative one half times 16 is negative eight. And so we have negative eight plus two, and this equals negative six. And that's the answer. All right, let's go ahead and box that up. Red boxing it. So your y value when x is negative four is negative six. So our x value in problem b is gonna be negative two, so that means we have the same situation going on, meaning that we use the first part of the piecewise function because our value of x is less than or equal to two. So all you gotta do is plug it in. So plugging this in, we have negative one half times negative two squared plus two. All right. We'll go ahead and simplify this, knowing that negative two squared is four, and then negative one half times four is negative two, and then negative two plus two, you had zero, okay? So zero's the answer. Let's go ahead and box it up. Boxing up my answers, that's what I do. All right, on to part C here. Part C, it says x is zero. Find out the value of the function when x equals zero. So going back to your conditions, we'll need to use which part? The, the first part or the second part? Uh, yeah, we'll need to use the first part. Why? Because our condition says to use the first part whenever x is less than or equal to two. And zero is less than or equal to two, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and plug that in. All right, I love plugging in zero because it's easy. So we have negative one half times zero squared plus two. All right, so that means that zero squared is zero, and then zero times negative one half, or you could say negative one half times zero is still zero. It's still zero. Then you'll add two to that. Zero plus two is two. The answer is two. Red box it. That's the answer to C, okay? So we're now moving on to D, ladies and gentlemen, to D. All right, our x value is two, okay? So since our x value is two, Let's check out our conditions. Our conditions state that we should use the first part of the function whenever x is less than or equal to two. Mm -hmm. It says to use the second part of the function whenever x is greater than two. Mm -hmm. Since our value of x is two, ladies and gentlemen, we should definitely use the first part of the function because our condition states that x is less than or equal to two when you're using that first part of the function, and that's exactly what we have. We have a value of two, so that satisfies our first condition. So plug it in there, all right? So let's do just that. We'll have the negative one half times two squared plus two. Simplifying this, we know that two squared is four, and then negative one half times four is negative two, and then negative two plus two, mm -hmm. yeah, that's zero. The answer is zero. Boxing it up. Red boxing it. All right, finally for E, we have a value of X that's positive four. Based on your conditions here, we know that we should be using the second part of our function. Why? Because four is greater than two. So once again, you always start by looking at the conditions first once you found out what your value of X is that you're plugging in. Mm -hmm. And we're plugging in a positive four here. And four is definitely greater than two. It's, gre it's greater than two, okay? Four is greater than two. Don't test me. Got it? Thank you. Now plug that into this second part of the function. Okay? There you go. So we're taking half. Let's go ahead and rewrite this here. All right, so we'll be taking half of four. There you go. All right, how do you like that? So half of four is two. Yes, one half times four is two. There you go. That's the answer. 
that is the answer. I'm going to box this up. Done and done. So that completes problem number two. There you go. Moving along to problem number three. All right. f of x equals negative 2x whenever x is less than negative 3. f of x equals 3x minus 1 whenever x is between and including the values negative 3 and 2. Mm -hmm. And we'll be using negative 4x for the value of f of x whenever x is greater than 2. That's our piecewise function. Make sure I pay attention to the conditions. Let's check it out. We're going to start out with part A where it's asking us to plug in negative 5 for our value of x. We'll start with the conditions first because we need to know which part of the function to use. Notice that this piecewise function is comprised of three separate parts. All right, Three separate rules based on our value within the domain. So negative 5. Mm -hmm. Negative 5 is less than negative 3. So I definitely need to use this first part of the function. So you'll replace the value of x in negative 2x with the negative 5. So let's rewrite that. We'll have negative 2 times negative 5. Simplifying this, negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. It is positive 10. There you go. I'm going to box this up because it's the answer. There you go. That's part A. I am moving on to part B now. Moving on to part B when x is negative 1. Mm -hmm. When x is negative 1, is negative 1 less than negative 3? No, it's not. No. Does negative 1 lie within the interval negative 3 to 2? Yes, it does. That means I need to use the second part of this function. All right. We'll be replacing the x here in 3x minus 1 with negative 1. Why? Because negative 1 lies between negative 3 and 2. There you go. So let's see what happens. Plugging this in, we'll have 3 times negative 1 minus 1. Simplifying this, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And then negative 3 minus 1 gives us negative 4. Negative 4. All right. Let's box it up red box in it. Then in part C we have a value of x which is negative 3 that we will be plugging in here. Okay, Based on our conditions when x equals negative 3 we'll be using the second part of the function. Why? Because here our value says that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3 and less than or equal to 2 in order to use the second rule of our piecewise function. So replace our value of x with negative 3 and that's second part of the function there. Alright so here we have it. We have 3 times negative 3 minus 1. And then simplifying this, 3 times negative 3 is going to be negative 9. Negative 9 minus 1 is negative 10. And this is our answer. All right. Moving on, in part D here, we have f of 2, meaning we want to find out the y value when x equals to 2. So x equaling to 2 means that we're going to be using which part of our piecewise function? The first part? The second part? The third part, uh, if it equals 2, we need to use the second part. Because notice that this interval here includes the value of 2. So we'll be plugging in 2 into the second part of that piecewise function. All right. So I'll rewrite it as 3 times 2 minus 1. All right. And so 3 times 2 is 6. And then 6 minus 1 is 5. So our answer here is positive 5. All right. Finally, we'll be plugging in 4 for x. So based on our conditions here from the original problem, we know that positive 4 is greater than 2. All right, so that means we have to use the third part of our piecewise function. So plugging in 4 into the third part of the function, we'll rewrite it as negative 4 times 4. All right, just like that. And then we know that negative 4 times 4 is just negative 16. Yes. There you have it. And those are the answers for C, D, and E. And I'm going to box them all up. That's right. I didn't forget. So we got a box for you, a box for you, and a box for you. I feel like Oprah. There you go. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be problem number three. Finally, we're going to be hitting up problem number four now. All right. Let's turn the page. All right. 
Problem number four, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. We're evaluating, right? Okay, so here we have problem number four. We're asked to find the y value when x equals negative six. Our conditions are not defined when x equals negative six. So as far as we know, our y value for when x equals negative six does not exist. So depending on your teacher's preference, you can state that this answer does not exist, or you can say that it is undefined, or you can say that there is no solution because our piecewise function is not defined for when a value of x equals negative six. All right, it's not part of the original domain. It's outside of the domain. That's why any of these, all right, would be acceptable. All right, so it does not exist. It's the null set, it's an empty set. It's no solution for that problem, okay? So there you go, you just can't do it. So we're moving on. In part B, it asks us to find the value of y when x is negative three. Well, when x is negative three, we need to use the first part of the function. So replacing this x value in that first part of the function, we'll have five tenths times negative three squared. All right, well, using your order of operations here, you know that negative three squared means negative three times negative three, which is positive nine. Then nine times five tenths is gonna give you a result of four and five tenths, all right? So this is the answer for part B, four and five tenths. In other words, multiplying by five tenths is the same as dividing by two or multiplying by one half, all right? And half of nine is four and five tenths. Now, for part C, Part C, we have a value of x that is negative two. Whenever x is negative two, let's check our conditions here. We should be using the first part of the function. Why? Because this compound inequality has a less than or equal to negative two value here. That means that when x equals negative two, all right, not just when it's greater than negative two, when it's equal to negative two, we're still using the first part of the function. So we'll be plugging in our value of negative two into that first part. So I'll be writing five tenths times negative two squared, and then simplifying this, negative two squared is positive four, and then four times a half, or four times five tenths, is gonna give us two. And that's it. That's the answer for part C. Next we have part D, where we have zero being replaced for x. All right, so find out the y value whenever x equals zero. That's the f of zero value that they're looking for. So looking at our conditions first, we'll find that zero lies in this region right here, in this interval right here for x. It's between negative two and positive two. So we use the second part of our piecewise function. And replacing x with zero, yeah, you got it. The answer is just zero. All you had to do was replace x with zero on that one. I like that part. Let's have all the problems look like that, right? <laughs> okay. So finally, we're looking at E, part E. They want us to find out the y value when x equals three. When x equals three is gonna lie in the interval between two and four, all right? So it's right in here. It's that third part of the piecewise function that we need to use. So replace your x in that x squared minus four with three. Let's go ahead and write that up. So we'll rewrite it as three squared minus four, all right? And three squared minus four means nine minus four, and nine minus four is always five. Okay, there you go, there you go. Couldn't see that, huh? There you go. So the answer is five. Let's go ahead and box up all these answers. I've been dying to do this. Here we go. So we'll just say that this is the null set, all right? Or you could say it does not exist, or we could say it's no solution. So find out which one your teacher prefers. There you go. That's the one you'll mark down for part A. Then for part B, we said our result was four and five tenths. Part C, it's two, uh, D, yeah, D, D is gonna be zero. And then finally, part E is five. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this video on evaluating piecewise functions. I had so much fun doing that with you. Thanks. Appreciate that. And could you please rate, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel? And as always, if you're able, please donate. It helps us bring you more free math tutorials from me, Mr. Witt, and Fort Bend Tutoring. Peace. Thanks for watching. We feel great knowing that you got some help and you're safe and sound. Now, if you'd be so kind as to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fort Bend Tutoring, and like us on Facebook. We'd be much obliged.